Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome back to Directions Live Online. My name is Mary Murphy with Esri Australia, and I will be your host for today's session. So today we are going to introduce the Digital Atlas of Australia, and we are very lucky to have three amazing people along to do just that. We have Megan McCabe, Delivery Lead, Digital Atlas of Australia from Geoscience Australia, and Megan will introduce us to the Digital Atlas of Australia. We also have Ben Berghauser, the Managing Director of Onir, and Onir are an Esri Partner Network Silver Business Partner, and their amazing team have been assisting the Digital Atlas team for several years with the design and the transition to operations. So consequently, Ben can speak very directly to, and will introduce you to, the pipeline for data getting into the Digital Atlas and how to just get started. And finally, we're joined by our very own Simon Jackson, who's always back with us, our spatial technology strategist with Esri Australia. And Simon will wrap up the session with an introduction to the Digital Atlas, taking a tour from an end user perspective. It is absolutely fantastic to have you all along here today. So hi, Megan. Hi, Ben. Hi, Simon. How are you all this morning or this afternoon for you? Good afternoon. <laughs> hey, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hey, Ben, how are you? Okay, that's enough from me. Let's get started. I'm going to pass across to Megan to kick us off. Over to you, Megan. Excellent. Thank you, Mary. I'm excited to have the opportunity to speak to you today about the Digital Atlas and how it's being used across government so far and discuss a little bit about how it could play a role in your work. To start us off, I would like to share a short video that provides an overview of the Digital Atlas. To build a brighter future for Australia, we need access to data that's timely, reliable and relevant to make better informed decisions. But with the increasing amount of data available, finding and using it can be challenging, as it often sits in disconnected silos. This is changing with the Digital Atlas of Australia, an interactive, secure and easy to use online platform that brings together curates and connects trusted national data sets. Powered by a digital ecosystem, it seamlessly integrates data across borders and systems on Australia's geography, people, economy and the environment, using location as the connecting thread. Explore data by theme, like transport, geology and soils, land use and more. Analyse data on demand using interactive maps and tools and visualise data, pinpoint areas of interest, upload data and share information and insights at the click of a button. From optimising planning and investment using infrastructure and population data to identifying business opportunities with the latest industry and workforce data and revolutionising agricultural practices, analysing data on soil and geology, water bodies and land use, the Digital Atlas is unlocking the power of smarter, place-based decisions. Explore the Digital Atlas of Australia today at digital.atlas.gov.au. Excellent. Getting into more detail, the Digital Atlas of Australia is an Australian government initiative being led by Geoscience Australia. It was introduced in the 2020-21 budget in response to the need for timely and geographically relevant data to address the diverse challenges our nation faces. Underpinning the Digital Atlas is an integrated geospatial infrastructure facilitating seamless data connection and collaboration across borders, sectors and disciplines. This infrastructure is what enables us to connect and share data from and into a range of different systems and portals. The Digital Atlas has three unique environments tailored to meet the needs of different users. The source environment is where government agencies can upload and link their data and develop and test maps and applications before publishing them. Our source environment is our testing ground and our sandpit. The second is Digital Atlas for Government, a secure environment for authenticated government users to explore and analyse data and access a full suite of GIS tools. The environment offers the same functionality you would see using GIS software on your desktop. Digital Atlas for Government is our collaboration space, allowing users to create applications and maps and then share them across agencies. 
The public facing digital atlas allows anyone, government, business, academia and the community to access location data from a range of trusted sources in a central location. Importantly, all environments provide non-technical users with the information and the tools they need so they can use the data and create their own maps easily. The Digital Atlas groups data by theme to help users find and access information. We've set up the themes to align with the United Nations Global Geospatial Data Framework, which covers the 14 themes used to underpin decision making. We have a range of data custodians integrating their data into the Digital Atlas from across federal government, with just under 200 data sets available. As part of the delivery of the Digital Atlas, we are also investing in the acquisition of high quality, trusted national data sets, not previously freely available for public use. The National Roads data set, now available and free for anyone to use in the Digital Atlas, was previously only available as a commercial product. It has been developed and supplied to the Digital Atlas by Geoscape Australia and includes details about different types of roads, such as highways, arterial roads, local roads and more. Users of the Digital Atlas are accessing this information to help with transport and freight planning. The data already available in the Digital Atlas covers basic information needs. This is the background information you pull in to support decision making. As the Digital Atlas moves forward, we're looking into adding broader information on health, research, environment, and culture. To do this, we'll continue to grow partnerships and invest in high quality, trusted national data. At a very high level, this is what the digital ecosystem for the Digital Atlas currently looks like. We have a range of users from across government sectors working in the Digital Atlas to create their own products or run analysis for location-based decision-making. The Digital Atlas's integrated geospatial infrastructure enables different systems to connect into the platform for data and information sharing. It also allows Digital Atlas data to be pushed into other platforms. Right now, we have about half a dozen platforms connected into the Digital Atlas. With the platforms interconnected, uh, as an example, to support emergency response and recovery, we can push demographic data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics into the Digital Atlas. From there, the Digital Atlas connects to the Australian Climate Service Environment. The Australian Climate Service Environment can then push this information into the Home Affairs Environment to support the National Emergency Management Agency. I'll now hand over to Ben, who's going to delve into more detail about the capabilities the Digital Atlas offers for the users of geospatial data across government. Thank you, Megan. Now, what I would like to explore with you is government agencies and how they can participate or expand their involvement in this digital ecosystem Megan has just outlined. In the most general sense, you all have business outcomes to meet. Your agency, department, or statutory organization receives funding to do something, and either directly or indirectly, that generates information. Almost universally, that information is spatial. This information of yours is always valuable to someone. Sometimes it is valuable enough that you have legislation that you must share it, or sometimes that value can be hard to find an audience for. Other times, the value others see in your information is not something which aligns well with society or the security concerns of the country at all, and you need to protect it from disclosure by utilising a secure environment. Thankfully, the Digital Atlas ecosystem and its different environments offers a choice of solutions to suit how you share and use your data. Where the public consumer sees the Digital Atlas, most will just see it as another catalog of government data shared publicly. Some consumers will also interact with its curated maps and apps to derive value, and others still will be able to leverage it for commercial outcomes, benefiting the Australian economy more broadly. It is a great capability to have available for these multitude of reasons, but that is just the tip of the iceberg concerning the actual value it delivers. Core to the Digital Atlas of Australia is actually the Digital Atlas government environment. This key component fundamentally enhances what government agencies can do with their own valuable information. To share spatial information as rich web content, 
an agency previously would have needed to fund and sustain their own public front end. This then requires consideration of availability, security, and all manner of additional costs. The Digital Atlas of Australia now makes this easier, streamlining the process for sharing information, either with government only or the public, without the resourcing overheads. Importantly, ownership and management of your information stays with you. The Digital Atlas provides the capability to connect your information to another platform, but you retain control. The ease of integration with this platform is achieved by its use of industry-leading commercial software, enabling independent agency participation. The Australian market offers comprehensive support services for ArcGIS solutions. When an agency seeks to expand their existing capability to leverage the Digital Atlas of Australia, there is help available. So let's look at how leveraging the Digital Atlas for government as a subsystem of the Digital Atlas can be achieved with three government agency profiles to consider. Let's first consider an agency which has little or no GIS capability to begin with. The Digital Atlas for Government enables this agency to virtually expand the reach and accessibility of their information environment and use the capabilities provided in the platform to make their information more accessible and useful. After considering the legislative and policy implications, agency staff can easily share information into the Digital Atlas for Government. This is a safe space and they can choose what to share and who to share it with, experimenting and growing their offerings in volume, quality, and usefulness. As the Digital Atlas of Australia utilizes industry-leading commercial software, ESRI's ArcGIS Enterprise, the agency has access to an extensive collection of online help and training resources. This means they don't necessarily need geospatial skills or experience to use the Digital Atlas, Picking up how to use the capabilities is possible for the majority of government information workers. In this first scenario, our hypothetical agency is undertaking community projects in a few hundred locations across Australia. They can use the Digital Atlas for government in order to add their data so it's securely accessible online for government users, configure a user-friendly interface to best showcase this information for others, and generate feedback and further refine their ideas with others. And the best part about this is that the only investment is the time of their existing staff members. In fact, when you have those forward learning grads who need an outlet for a project, point them to the Digital Atlas for Government and let them go. A user can easily take a spreadsheet of community project data and make an interactive application to showcase the community benefit it provides, all in the browser from their corporate device on your network. The power of the Digital Atlas then really kicks off with the inevitable question, can we share it to the public? This is where the relationship between the public facing Digital Atlas and the Digital Atlas for government really shines. These systems are designed for data to be shared forward from the government environment to the public, seamlessly enabling greater discovery and use. Your agency can promote your content by linking directly to it, or even embed the content to feature on your own website. It is not a one-way street, and there is a wide range of possibilities which can be leveraged to ensure that this content contributes into your own corporate web presence. In our next scenario, let's consider an agency which operates desktop GIS using ArcGIS Pro, a common pattern across government. Many government agencies have the ArcGIS desktop software and an existing number of staff who know how to undertake basic mapping. In this scenario, the agency has this existing capability, but are perhaps not benefiting from some of the sharing capabilities of WebGIS. This agency has a handful of spatial professionals, but not a lot of dedicated infrastructure. They have powerful desktop software and the ability to spatialize large amounts of data. Most likely they produce PDF or other digital format maps representing static point in time information. The spatial professionals in this agency can connect directly to the Digital Atlas for Government from their desktop software. They can interact with other government data from there, but most importantly, they now have somewhere to share. In this hypothetical scenario, the agency holds a spatial reference layer, which outlines the contact details of community groups, which need to be notified when operating in national parks. With the Digital Atlas Government environment, 
the agency can now share this information live within their own agency in the form of an easy to use web application to spatially determine who to contact for any given location. If this is found suitable to share more broadly, this web application can be made available across more government users. This can be only some of them or all of them. If the full data set is not suitable to share publicly, the Digital Atlas for Government also enables powerful ways to share data with sensitive details removed. In this scenario, there is a lot of specialist knowledge involved in truly optimising the benefits of the Digital Atlas for Government for desktop workflows. Again, the use of a software solution with comprehensive support available in the Australian market enables an agency to expand their existing capability to leverage the Digital, digital Atlas of Australia in a way which suits them. In this final scenario, we consider an agency which has already made the investment in a similar WebGIS system to the Digital Atlas, utilising the ArcGIS technology. There are numerous agencies already utilising their own ArcGIS enterprise to share publicly or who have their own ArcGIS online software as a service subscription. Integrating with the Digital Atlas of Australia's ecosystem in partnership means that live synchronisation is now available to share information in a seamless manner. Through intra-system collaboration, trusted relationships are configured, which control the directionality and availability of content between the agency and the Digital Atlas for Government. In this scenario, our agency from the previous example now shares their government releasable information directly and live to Digital Atlas for Government users without needing to build a system to securely achieve that on their own. They can merely extend their existing capability to include wider, secure sharing. There are significant savings in data flow design and operation once the systems have this trusted relationship established. With seamless replication of selected content to the wider audience easily configured and controlled. When designing, modifying or updating your own capability, you should consider the wide array of benefits in efficiency and cost when participating in a digital atlas partnership. These benefits are something that a qualified ESRI specialist can assist you with. From this point, you can build out your system in a very wide variety of ways. This can include broadening your information service offerings, creating richer and more engaging content, or just contributing your authoritative data into Australia's first integrated geospatial infrastructure. So what we have outlined here are three profiles of participation with the Digital Atlas of Australia through the Digital Atlas for Government subsystem. What is important to recognise is that there still needs to be data governance in your own agency. You still need processes to ensure that your data is shared correctly, and even if it is fit to share in the first place. There are a lot of considerations in this space, but what the Digital Atlas does is help make it a policy and governance issue, rather than strictly an ICT project or funding issue. Leveraging the Digital Atlas means that you can expand the reach of your information, improve your services, or otherwise just contribute more to the collective government effort. As I've said earlier, there is help available as this is not a bespoke capability. This is widely available technology with numerous options to undertake your own agency skills improvement, process development, and broader capability enhancement. You can now consider what is possible as an information contributor to the Digital Atlas and whether this can take your offerings into the wider government or public spaces. I'll now pass to Simon to explore some of the amazing end user capabilities already developed with the Digital Atlas. Cheers, Ben. So just to recap, there's a wide range of awesome national data sets categorized into those themes that, that Megan introduced us with. And, and cheers, Ben, for elaborating on those different approaches or profiles that agencies can participate with the Digital Atlas. I'm going to shift focus to essentially the other end of the Atlas, the, the different ways the actual end users of the Atlas can engage with the content. And it's important to note that you know, different users will have different needs and different skill levels. And it's been kind of shown in the past that attempting to design a one size fits all interface is often not the best strategy and not one that's been done here. And that's why there are a variety of options to inter uh, interact with the content from the Atlas illustrated with this kind of top level of this diagram. And I'd like to just spend a little bit of time talking through a few of these. First off being the fact that the Atlas includes a, a range of curated interactive applications that help you explore the content and provide some context around it. 
You as a user can search for applications. There's also a catalog where you can filter to applications. Um, this is a real nice simple one that allows you to plug in your address or detect your location, adjust a distance slider, and it will return the emergency service locations nearest to your location. But of course, there's more advanced applications that have been made available in the Atlas. Um, there's a range of dashboarding applications. On the front page, there's a, a showcase gallery, and this is currently my favorite one. It allows you to explore the income support payments, job seeker and employment stats. Uh, it's always interesting with a lot of web apps to kind of you know zoom into your local area and work out how your neighborhood compares to others. It's also a great example of how this single application still combines data sources from multiple agencies, in this case, the Bureau of Statistics, as well as the Department of Social Services. And just to emphasize, the Digital Atlas is not a single application. It hosts a range of interactive applications that combine content from multiple providers. And every time I revisit this catalog and sort on last created, there's always new ones to explore. Now, the Atlas also allows us as users to create our own maps from a combination of content from within the Atlas, but also from pulling in our own content from our own systems and external content as well. From the header menu, there is the option to create a map. Now, for casual users, the basic map builder lets you build maps using Atlas content. If required, there is a pullout window with some built-in help, but the interface has been designed to be intuitive and it, it avoids the use of any technical jargon. You can open up either pre-configured maps around themes such as water or transport, or in this instance, start with a blank canvas and load in layers of content individually onto your map. Now, despite its simplicity, the user can still quickly perform a range of tasks, such as switching out the underlying base map to an aerial base map, um, looking at the legend, adjusting the transparency on, on layers, or in this particular example, swiping the visibility of this vegetation layer to understand what the underlying imagery looks like uh, in and around the Grampians here in Victoria. The user can also choose to save these maps, in this instance, saving it out as an image file that they might want to include into perhaps a report or uh, in an email, for instance. Now, for the super users or power users, they can choose an advanced map experience. Now, this will already be familiar interface to those that are familiar with Esri, but for new users, it has a built-in help as well as many tutorials to help you get started. You can load in content from the Atlas, but also content from other sources. For example, open standard web services like WMS and WFS. The interface helps you and guides you picking the right options to symbolize layers. Here we've got a, a data set from the Bureau of Statistics and walking you through applying a chart symbol to show the different types of dwelling structures um, across the country. And on the topic of charts, it's not just about maps. You can also create charts to complement your maps that will provide extra insights into the data. And this can be anything from simple bar and pie charts to histograms, box plots, or in this case, we're going to take two variables to plot on a scatter plot. And these charts are map aware. So once you've saved these charts and the user starts to pan around the map, the charts will quickly respond to show only what the user is looking at in the map. Really good way of um, getting outliers and, and trends in the data, uh, especially with the ABS's census data. Now for coders, data scientists and system integrators, they typically prefer to work with the web services directly so that they can reference the Atlas directly into their projects, workflows, and other systems. When one of these personas finds a data set that they have an interest in, they can filter it down to the records they need, perhaps just applying a filter to get the records for their state, for instance. They can then download the data set in a range of common formats from anything from the good old shapefile to geopackage, or better yet, they can actually pick a a web service endpoint and use this web service endpoint, be it either the entire endpoint or a filtered version of that endpoint, um, to then reference that data set directly from the Atlas in another system. So in this instance, we're taking, again, a data set from the Bureau of Statistics and um, adding it into the wonderful Digital Twin Victoria platform. And once this is then saved into this other external platform, it's directly referencing that service from Digital Atlas. So just a, a real simple example of how um, easy it is to sort of integrate from the Atlas into other systems. Now, I finally want to just quickly touch on how once your content is made available into Digital Atlas, it is also then searchable for many other interfaces. Through registering your content with Digital Atlas, 
and becomes more discoverable. And as a result, you get more people using your content. For ArcGIS desktop users, they can use the built-in search bar and discover content from the public digital atlas. The user just simply types in search terms, in this case, historical bushfires, and then a couple of clicks and it's added into their pro project. Same for those that are using systems like ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. Just use a simple search bar prompt, type in what you want, maybe it's that Geoscape Roads, and, and it'll grab that content from Digital Atlas Australia and add it to your web maps and your 3D scenes and mash it up with your other GIS layers from your own business and share it accordingly within your organization. And this experience of using a search bar, discovering Atlas content, adding it and starting to use that content is across a range of application inter of, of different interfaces where Esri has plugins for. The Office 365 apps um, like Excel and Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Power BI and, and, and SharePoint, these also have that same ability of searching for Atlas content and adding it in. There's also a, a huge number of AutoCAD users within Australia that, again, with a simple search bar within the AutoCAD ecosystem, they can discover content from the Atlas, in this case, again, that national roads layer, and use it in their CAD projects for, for design projects. They don't need to know about URLs, the web services, they just search natural language and grab that content and add it to their project. So with that, I, I do encourage you to take a visit of the Atlas, um, but we are also more than happy to have any conversations about how you can consume the Atlas content or integrate it into your own systems. With that, I'll pass back to Megan. Thank you, Simon. Uh, before we move into the q and I wanted to touch on a few key takeaways from what we've spoken about today. The Digital Atlas is a versatile and scalable platform that can handle different types and volumes of data and enable you to create various products and analyze those products for place-based decision-making. There are various ways you can connect into the Digital Atlas's ecosystems, both as a supplier or as a user of geospatial information, depending on your needs and your preferences. And you don't need to be a geospatial expert to use the Digital Atlas. We've used industry-leading, out-of-the-box capabilities to design support for non-experts and ESRI professionals alike. Plus, users have a comprehensive collection of help and training resources available. Importantly, the Digital Atlas is a cornerstone of a thriving geospatial ecosystem. It is technology agnostic, so it can seamlessly integrate with any existing or future systems that you may use. With that, I'll hand back to Mary to take us through the Q&A. So the first question that we have here from Tanya. Hello, Tanya. How can I get access to the Digital Atlas for government? That sounds like a Megan question. You want to tackle that one, Megan? Yeah, thank you. Uh, excellent question, Tanya. So Digital Atlas for Government has been set up for federal government users to start with. Uh, over the coming months, we're expanding it to states and territories. Right now, we've got about 30 different federal government agencies across many different sectors accessing the Digital Atlas. Um, so if you're interested in your federal government agency, reach out to the Digital Atlas. And states and territories, uh, we're creating a, a bit of a, a wait list as we work through the process of adding states and territories into the government domain. Brilliant. Thank you, Megan. Um, next question that we have here is from Graham. Is there any elevation and satellite imagery data in the Digital Atlas? We might start with Megan again with this one. Yeah, brilliant. So we have a project underway that we are working on um, to incorporate low resolution but high temporal uh, coverage satellite data into Digital Atlas. Mm. Think of Landsat, think of Sentinel. Mm. Um, resolution is between 80 metres and 50 metres. Over the coming months, we should see some fantastic Landsat and Sentinel products in the Digital Atlas and we'll continue to grow and consider more high detailed resolution in the future. For elevation and depth data, we do have national national coverage for elevation data in the Digital Atlas now. There's some great platforms that actually provide high resolution elevation data that you can clip and ship and take away and, and pull into your own application. And we don't want to duplicate the efforts there. So right now, national coverage, low resolution, but we're looking to improve. Awesome. Simon, want to throw anything in there? Are we good? Um, I, I guess as a GIS professional, I've and I've got a little bit of a sneak peek into seeing how that project's unfolding is, is yeah, like the, the the great content from Geoscience Australia and the imagery department, having that available within ArcGIS Pro as a service that's time enabled and I can filter on land cover or, or bands. And, and, and I don't know, it, I, it's 
making it more accessible and easy for, for me to get at that content is, is mm. going to be really interesting to see how the, the Esri user base uh, responds to that. Brilliant. Yeah, cheers. Okay, next question from Lian. Is there data from the state and territories available in the digital atlas? Megan, this is definitely a you again. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you, Mary. Uh, right now, we're focusing on nationally consistent and trusted data sets. To create a nationally consistent and trusted data set, that information has to come from everywhere, from somewhere, um, and that location usually is states and territories. So having that ability to aggregate state and territory data up into a nationally consistent national product uh, is an amazing opportunity, and there's plenty of providers out there that do that on the behalf of uh, other agencies. Right now, um, we are working with national. We don't have individual state and territory data um, in the digital atlas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Okay, and Ronald, which government agencies have access to the government atlas? Megan, Ben, who wants to jump on this one? Oh, I reckon I'll go for it first. Uh, <laughs> so we've got about 30 different federal government agencies. This includes um, uh, people that work in demographic information, people that work in environment and agriculture, people that work uh, with a more industry focused lens. And as I mentioned previously, uh, we'll work towards uh, increasing access out to states and territories in the near future. Brilliant. Cheers for that, Megan. Okay, question from Tim. Does government access include local government? Any fees? <laughs> so Megan, I reckon Excellent. this is you again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, fantastic. In the near future, uh, local government is definitely on our list. We have uh, great partnerships across federal government with direct connections into local government areas. And a good example of that is if a, a federal department is working from state and territory down to local government to produce high quality information, it's really important to open up that access so you can work in collaboration in a web-based GIS and validate and create that information together. Um, so we'll continue to work on enabling access to state and territory and local government. The second part of the question, there are no fees to Digital Atlas of Australia, are free and openly accessible to all. Got to love it. Okay, question from Chris. Will the data set thumbnails be standardised? Um, excellent. So who will we throw this one to? Ben, Megan, someone want to grab this one? <laughs> it's probably a Megan again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too popular. <laughs> Megan getting hammered. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, we get content from a range of different providers. We are continuing to improve our user experience and that includes a standardization element on how the information is displayed. Um, thumbnails is up there as a priority. Uh, so working with our partners that provide us the data to come to a solution um, so we can design a standardized uh, thumbnail. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad problem if that's all we're picking up, right? Okay, so question from Sarah. Do the maps include data in Australian waters? That's a me question again. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Megan. <laughs> Go for it. So we have national coverage of data and we're slowly considering other data sets and in building those partnership relationships where we expand out a little bit further. Um, and a good example of that is having information that's captured offshore in Australia. Um, so we're talking uh, whether that's industry information like oil wells or pipelines or whether that's um, submarine cables, that kind of thing. All of those are important pieces of information that add to the decision making process. Yeah, excellent question. Um, just a couple of uh, questions that have come through. I have a few more I'll throw into the mix in a moment. Just uh, kind of, you know, I can I can answer to give Megan a break. Is this being recorded, Nikki? Yes, it is. Um, and we'll have that sent out to you as soon as the recording is available. Shad has also asked, are there outputs or resources, I should say, from this webinar? Other than the video at the moment, no. But if you would like to know more about any of the demos or the particular items that everyone spoke to today, let us know in that post event survey and we can absolutely reach out to you with some additional items as well. It's no problem whatsoever there. Okay, um, this next question that I'm going to pass through to the crew is a question from Tara. And Tara, hello Tara, thank you for rocking up today. Is the digital atlas all stored on shore? Are there additional protections to safeguard this fantastic resource from unwanted access slash modification? Excellent question. Megan, is this a I can again? probably I can probably oh, answer some of this for you, Megan, <laughs> if you'd like. 
Yeah, go for uh, it, yeah. Ben. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It is all. It is all uh, onshore when it's when it is in the government atlas, so the secured uh, portion of the digital atlas. Uh, the data is onshore. It is in Australian uh, data centres, uh, and it is in it's in a cloud environment that has been uh, accredited to to what's being stored there. When it's pushed forward and it's shared publicly, it does go offshore, but it is a replication and it is designed to be shared widely. So that is that is part of the design of that. Um, when it comes to unwanted access or modification, there is a complete set of security documentations and authority to operate that are, that uh, are co which come with the system, uh, which is a lot of fun. If I'm sure some of you have done that before, um, and as far as whether it's uh, modified or uh, accessed by actual users who have permission, uh, we have a range of roles and permissions that we that we roll out to protect uh, the information from unwanted modification. So yes, simple answer: there are a lot of protections, and we do comply with the uh, with the requirements of the Information Security Manual and all other government requirements in that sense. Excellent, Megan. Anything else to add, or do you think Ben nailed it? Ben nailed it. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Question from Hasti. Are you able to integrate existing Esri hubs or sites into Digital Atlas, or is it only existing individual Esri applications? Good question. Ben, Simon, Megan, who <laughs> thinks they can help with that? Integrating I, I'll, I'll divide this into two sites. parts for you. From a technical Do sense, it. from a technical sense, Absolutely, <laughs> integration is completely possible. The technology is open and it's interoperable, and uh, it's all possible. What it comes down to is over to Megan, governance and um, and negotiation. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, and I think Ben, during your component of today's uh, webinar, you covered it really well, touching on that every agency has their own governance and policies that they must adhere to. Um, the ability for Digital Atlas to have a co-designed uh, data and product governance framework has been a great highlight of my working with this project. Uh, what it means is that we have been engaging across government to make sure that our governance processes are consistent and um, they work not just for me, but they work for everyone. So if you're curious about the governance um, around Digital Atlas, please reach out. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, question from Pascal. How will CSIRO, NCRIS facilities and university power users be able to access the Digital Atlas of Australia only through the public facing version? So that's a question there for the end user. Will we yeah, throw fantastic. This to um, Egan and Simon, I might maybe? start yeah. off, Mary. Um, mm. So, with the government domain, because we do have up to official sensitive uh, level information in there, um, we are very conscious about how we expand our access to the government domain, um, making sure that we start with federal government and work with each agency on their authentication systems that they may have. In the future, we'll expand out to states and territories. For agencies that don't have a go-to authentication system, um, we have been able to collaborate with some partners and uh, talk through the process about getting them an authentication system that enables them to use it. For now, the public version is the fastest way uh, with some great functionality in there for power users to get started. Excellent. Anything else to add to that, Simon or anyone? Mm, All good. Not. No, excellent. Um, I do like, though, that it has that public facing end that the you know students in particular go in and have a look around. Uh, I absolutely would be sending students that way. OK, excellent. The next question we have, um, Casey, oh, you said we've answered this, but the question you had was, how are you overcoming data attribution discrepancies between states and other suppliers? And I think Megan already spoke to that with it being a work in progress around the thumbnails and it being one of the other items that's on that list. OK, excellent. The next question we have here is from Jim. I'm very interested to set up and share our agency's data. I'm signed up for Digital Atlas for Government. What's the next step to share data or to get access to the source environment if on offer? Apologies, I think that's a Megan question again. That is. It's a great question, Jim. <laughs> uh, so short answer is please reach out to me and the Digital Atlas team. 
When we're including data from partners um, across government, we like to put together a partnership arrangement or a letter of intent that really formalises the partnership that we have moving forward. This allows us to both agree to the terms and conditions. You tell me where you want the data to go. Is it appropriate just for government? Would you like to share it with public? And then we both sign up to the roles and responsibilities we each, we each have, including how to maintain the data through its life cycle. So there's a bit of an administrative process, I'm afraid, but please reach out and we'll get started. Awesome. And I think this might be our last question. So this is a question from Leanne. Would it be possible to use FME to access the data in Digital Atlas for analysis and automated workflows? A doozy. Megan? It's a bit simple. Probably. It's a simple answer. Or Ben? I, I will answer this one because we <laughs> actually do it. Um, the simple <laughs> answer is yes. Um, it, is, it is based on a per user. So you're a, a named user within the system. So you have a user you can log in with. And if you're using FME, uh, you can log in with, that, with those credentials to the Digital Atlas. You can draw data out. If you have publishing permissions, permissions such as in the Digital Atlas for government, you can publish data from FME using the ArcGIS connectors. Um, you can also do it manually if you really want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, this may be something Simon actually has more experience doing, but, um, but yeah, definitely it is. If you have an application that has a way to connect to an ArcGIS system, this, this is available to you to connect. Amazing. Okay. Well, I'm very conscious of time and the fact that you are all very busy people and I'm very happy that you were able to spend some time with us today. So I think that's all the time we have for questions. So thank you very much, everyone, for those questions that have come through. And a massive thank you again, Megan, Ben and Simon for uh, participating and telling us all about the Digital Atlas. It was great to have you.